Cool. All right. Um, so I'm just going to kind of flick through the questions that we've done so far together um, just to kind of get you guys thinking about what theme MMR is. So if you guys remember, question number one, I did label each one of the uh, spectra and what they were used for. So IR we used for functional groups. Um, and then we looked at mass spec. Next, mass spec tells us two things. It tells us uh, the molecular ion, which is really useful because it tells us how many carbons are in that molecule. Um, and I asked this question today when it came to your due now, which was, does the number of carbons you find always equal the number of uh, carbon environments that you identify on the CMMR? So in this first example, you've identified seven carbons uh, based off of the molecular mass. And then on the mass, or sorry, on the CMMR, you've identified three carbons. So these two numbers don't match. Um, in question number two, you guys found out that there were, I want to see what it says now, five carbons. And you stated that there's only three carbon environments. So that one doesn't match. This one here, you identified that there were two carbon environments. This is question number three now. And there were two carbon, or sorry, two carbons in your uh, molecule. And in the CMMR, it, it also says two carbons. So this one does match. Question number four, you guys identified that there were three carbons and there are three carbon environments. So this one does match. And then this last one, we have done question number nine. You guys identified uh, that there were six carbons because we times this by two and there were six carbon environments on the CMMR. So that one does match. CMMR. So what we can kind of conclude from that information that I've just kind of showed, showed you is that only sometimes the CMMR and the number of carbons in the molecule match, other times it doesn't. And what I want to explain to you is why. Now, something to keep in mind about the CMMR is that it is going to help you figure out the structure of a molecule. The way it's going to do this is that it's going to help you determine which isotope is the correct answer. So this is a very important one for there. Is it unlocked? But if you guys remember lesson six in the organic chemistry topic, we talked about structural isomers and we talked about some of those NCA questions and how you can have multiple molecules with the same molecular formula, but different arrangements and how they put things together. And so CMMR is going to help us figure out which of those is the right answer. Questions, concerns, or comments thus far? No, we're doing okay. All right. So let me grab a piece of paper so I can first explain to you guys what we're talking about when we say something like carbon bonds. <laughs> Alrighty. So, this is quite a tricky kind of idea to uh, wrap your head around. Um, I will give you guys two molecules as examples so we can work our way through and compare and contrast. So, for the molecule that I'm going to give you, I will give you, doo -doo -doo -doo, just trying to think about my color coding. You know me, I like colors. Right. So I'm going to give you two molecules. Um, I'm going to keep it nice and simple. So I will give you uh, a three carbon alcohol. So that'd be C3H2O. Um, 
uh, times two, six, seven, eight. Oh, so here, oh, is it blurry? Better? Worse. Better? Come on. Zoom in. Okay. So this here is my molecular formula. I need to get a new document camera. I've been putting it off, but I think it might be. What are you doing? Do you need more light? Do you need my hand to help? <laughs> Using someone's glasses. All right. So there's my molecular. Get focused. Otherwise, I'll just have to do chalk and talk. There we go. All right. So that's my molecular formula. There are two different isotopes I could make with this that I'm going to use as my example. The first one is going to be a, a primary alcohol, CH3, CH2, CH2, I lie, with an OH. So that's a primary alcohol. If I was to name it, it would be butan, sorry, not butan, propan, one all. There we go. Are we okay with that? All right. Second one, I'm going to move these OH into the center carbon, making a secondary, and it's still um, a structural isomer because it's the same number of carbon and everything else. So one, two, three, and then this is a secondary, for example, and I'm going to name it. It's propan two all. Are we okay with that so far? All right. Let me just pick a little dash line down the center. So we are thinking about each one of these carbons, and we're thinking about what does that carbon have? So I'm going to go through and we're going to go through each carbon and we're going to list out what carbon sort of and like what things are attached to that carbon. So let's go with this carbon number one. And I just want to list for carbon number one. What things does it have? So I noticed that carbon number one. Has an OH attached to it as its first item. The second thing I see attached to it is two hydrogens. So we're going to have hydrogen and hydrogen. And the last thing I'm going to list that it has is the ethyl. It has a CH2 and a CH3. So that's what carbon number one has for me. Are we good? All right, carbon number two. So when I look at carbon number two, the first thing I see is what's uh, on it, and I see that there's two hydrogens. So let's write that down, two hydrogens. The other thing I see with this, and I'm using lots of different colors to help you guys kind of see what I mean by like the list of stuff that's there. So this carbon, when I look to this side, it has a CH3. I'm trying not to repeat my colors. All right, and the last thing that it has is this bit here, which is the CH2OH. And my first question before I do carbon number three is if I look at carbon one and carbon number two, do they have the exact same list? The exact same list of stuff? No, because we see that they both have two hydrogens, but this one has a CH2, CH3, that has a CH3. This one has a CH2, uh, OH, and an OH. So they're not exactly the same. So this is different and that one's different. All right, let's go down to the last one. 
Hopefully you stay in focus, my thing. All right. See carbon number three, which is this last one over here at the end. Let's go through and do the list. So it has three hydrogens. One, two, three. And then its last group is going to be that tail end over there. So CH2, CH2OH. Does this one have the same list as anything above? No. So since these are each all different, we call this three carbon environments. So this one has three carbon environments. And that's because each carbon is unique. Now we got to do the next guy. And I'll try to keep the colors the same so that way um, it doesn't confuse you. Keep going. Okay. Let's look at propane 2 all. So again, we will number our carbons. I'm going to number it in the same direction just so that way we're reading it in the same way, but it wouldn't make a difference. So this is my carbon number one. So carbon number one for my second example is again, I'm going to go through the list. First thing I see on carbon is how many hydrogens, and it has three. So one, two, three. And the next thing I'm looking for is what's attached to it on this side. So I see that I have, and actually I should do it in a different color. And, all right, so that's having a CH with an OH and a CH3 as it's set up. So that's our first one. You okay with that? All right, keep going. Okay. Carbon number two, which is this guy over here. So C2, we see it has the one hydrogen. Oops, let me move that back up. The one hydrogen, it has a CH3 on both sides. So it has a CH3, a CH3, and then what's the last thing it has? An OH, and I'm just trying to keep to that color code so that way we're kind of mindful of what they have in comparison, and an OH. Are these two carbons the same? No, very different list. All right, let's look at carbon number three. The third one, the last one. All right, so carbon number three, when we look at it, just going to pull it back up. How many hydrogens? Three again. So one, two, three. And then what's attached? The COH and then the CH3. So I'm gonna, is that the same as this one here? Yeah. So CH, OH, CH3. So do we see any similarities? Yeah, so carbon number one and carbon number three are exactly the same. So these two would be considered the same carbon environment. So there's only two carbon environments then. So this is the same list. Therefore, same carbon environment. So in reality, how many carbons environments we're going to have in this, if we looked at the CMMR, two. So this molecule would have two carbon environments on the CMMR. So if I was trying to distinguish these two molecules from each other, on the CMMR, this molecule would have three peaks this molecule would only have two. And that's my how I'm distinguishing my isomers. The reason why this one here has fewer carbon environments is because of the symmetry of the molecule. Fewer. 
So it's fewer because of our symmetry. So if we look at this one up here, carbon number three is actually the exact same environment as carbon number one. So these two would have the same peak, and this one would have a separate one. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Questions, concerns, comments. Move it up so you guys can see this bit. Now, in reality, I don't need you guys to write a whole list like this. It's just for me to help you guys visualize what's going on and what I'm trying to explain by carbon environments and symmetry. All right. I think we should play spec bingo, give you guys a little bit of break from the notes, and then I can show you guys how it works on your spec data. Does that sound like a good plan? It also means that if we play spec bingo, you have a chance to get your head around what the carbon environments look like. All right. Cool. Keep going. Right. Can I move it? Okay. If you guys remember from question number one, I said there were several bits of information that we will know from it. So first off, uh, with our knowns for the molecule, we know it has an OH and we know it has seven carbons. Now that I have this bit of information from the CMMR, I know that there's only three carbon environments. So that helps give me a hint because it tells me that with the seven carbons, there's only three environments. So what that tells me is that there must be some sort of symmetry in the molecule. In order for that to happen, because I can't just get rid of carbons now. Are we okay with that so far? All right. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to start thinking about isomers that would allow for three carbon environments. And I also have to keep in mind the functional group. I'm going to place my functional group in the middle of my molecule. It is an odd number because that then helps me um, kind of eliminate the possibilities of um, having too many carbon environments. Because we know that if something's at the end, then the symmetry is lost. So I'm going to start with my first guess. And I'm going to go, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to put the OH on the first carbon there. And that just helps give me an idea of what I'm looking for. So then I'm going to fill it in. And now I want to check for the symmetry of the molecule to see, does it actually have three carbon environments? If not, that is okay, because what that tells you is that you actually are working towards the excellence level now. So I like to work inside going out. This is my first carbon environment. These two are exactly the same. So that's my second carbon environment. These two would be exactly the same. So this would be my third carbon environment. And then these two will be exactly the same. This is my fourth carbon environment. So does this molecule meet the requirements that I have set? No. So I'm going to eliminate this molecule as a possible answer. The good news is that helps get you up to excellence. So I'm going to eliminate this isomer. This is not the right answer. Uh, and that's because it has too many carbon environments. So what you guys are going to have to do is lots of trial and error to figure out what do I need to do. So the next thing I'm thinking about doing is like, well, what if I move my... Um, N carbons, and I start making branches. So if I start making branches, 
I know that they will have some symmetry there. So we're going to try that as our next molecule. I will only do five carbons in this case. I will take off two as branches. Like that. I'm going to keep the OH in the center because I know that keeps my symmetry. And I'm going to have my CH3s coming off these two carbons now. So I have CH3, CH3, CH3 there, CH3 there, CH2, CH2, and then CH. Are we okay with that so far? Yep. All right, let's check my carbon environments. So this first carbon environment, that's my one. These two are exactly the same still. CH2, two methyls, and then same tail on each side. So this is carbon environment number two. And then are these methyls going to have the same carbon environment? Yeah, three carbons and then their tails are the same. Three carbons, or sorry, three hydrogens and their tails are the same. So this is my third environment. So this one is the right answer. Are we good? All right. Um, I'll be mindful of time and I want to give you guys some chance to practice. Um, so things to keep in mind is that for the merit, I just need a right answer. There might be situations where multiple answers will be correct based off of the information that has been given. Um, in that case, we then start moving into some other categories. And these are the things that I'll talk about next week. So the last two things we need to do for excellence, the first thing is to talk about fragments. So we're looking at this bit of information here, and we're seeing how the molecule has broken down. Fragments are really important because they can help us distinguish if we have two molecules that fit the conditions. I'm going to hold off and talk about that next week. I just want you guys to be aware of where the excellence is now starting to go to. The other thing that I'm looking for in excellence is the integration of the spectra to help you back yourself up. That's going to be looking at the second bit of information for the CMMR and what it can tell us. Again, we will do that next week. Um, but this bit here is starting to get towards the excellence level because one of the things I really need to see for the excellence is explaining the not. So for the merit, explaining what it is for the excellence, explaining what it is and what it is not. So it's not a bad thing to get isomers that are not the right answer, because then you can tell me why it's not the right answer. Are we good so far? All right, when it comes to telling me which one is not the right answer, I only need one example. If you want, you can stick in multiple just to give yourself some backup. Cool. All right, that's us for today. Um,